Let me redo this. Hold on, guys. Rotate device back. No, I don't want it locked this way. I can't see you guys that way. How do I unlock the rotation? Hold on. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling because I want to go landscape so I can see the chat. Um, or do you guys prefer it this way? Hold on. Okay. I'll be back. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Give me one sec. I'll be back. <laughs> hey, guys. Okay, how do I... Hmm. Huh. Alrighty. Well, I guess we're going to have to go this way. Same. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to put this on my tripod. Ugh. So, <laughs> this is what happens when you go live. Okay. Can you guys see me? Okay, I'm going to move everything closer. So that way... You guys can see me. Okay. I guess this works. Like, I actually don't like it. Okay, where's everyone from? Netherlands. All right. So, we're going to have to make this new. I usually don't go... Uh, portrait, I like to go landscape, but that's okay. Toronto, alrighty. So, we are going to be repotting the Neon Pothos. A few questions I often get about this one. How long have I had it? Uh, I think it's going to be about two and a half years. I did repot this guy last year uh, around the same time. Back then, he went from like a four inch to, or a six inch to this eight inch pot. And uh, now we're going to move him from this size to this size, which is a, a 10 inch pot. Canada must be place to be <laughs> Oklahoma. It's actually a really nice day right now. Um, the last couple of days has been you know, quite rainy and, and uh, right now it's really nice sunny, um, not too hot, not too cold, so. Indiana, happy Memorial Day weekend, I guess, to all our American friends. So I also got a few questions that some of you guys asked on my Instagram. I have them typed out. I got a few uh, plant questions, a few like small business questions, and then of course some of your favorite because some of you guys are nosy, a few personal questions. <laughs> Poland, Memorial Day, that's right, Memorial Day. Okay, so I want to start with, so after we do our Neon Pothos, I'm also gonna repot all the Manjulas that I currently have in 100% perlite. Now these were imports that I got for the shop and when I first got them, I uh, acclimated them in water and then from water I moved them to perlite because I found that these ones root a little bit easier and faster in perlite than uh, if they were in water. Which is different because I'm so used to uh, rooting pothos in water and then from there moving into soil like neon, golden pothos, marble queen, so much easier. But for some reason, the manjulas, I found it to be a little bit more difficult to root in water. But again, that's just my experience. I don't know about you guys. I just got a neon pothos. She's beautiful. Yeah, it's one of my favorite pothos, honestly. Like, I'm going to start removing um, this guy from the pot. Now, oftentimes I get the question, when is it time to repot? Um, usually, first signs are the roots are showing through the drainage holes. Uh, it's not that bad on this one, but you can see right there. Uh, second sign is I'm finding that I often need to water this one a lot more, like more often than usual. So normally I would water this Neon Pothos um, last year, maybe like once every week and a half. Um, lately it's like once every four days, five days. So, And that's because there's just a lot more roots in the pot uh, than the soil. And on top of that, there's just a lot more, the vines are a lot longer, so it's needing a lot more water and a lot more um, yeah, energy from, from that. I have several pothos that are very, 
vining? Should I cut vines? I mean, it's up to you. I think at the end of the day, it's, it's preference on, you know, how you want your pothos to look. I personally like them trailing nicely on top of a bookshelf or um, like climbing on a moss pole like this golden pothos that you see there. I also repotted these guys at the same time. Magandang gabi, mga kababayan. Did I say that right? Um, all right, so I removed it from the pot and you guys can see that the roots are somewhat coiling around already, so it definitely needs to be repotted. I'm just gonna massage the, the base for now to try and loosen um, a bit of the soil, and then we're gonna move it to the new pot. So, great time to answer some questions. <laughs> okay, first one, how do you encourage, oh, I guess I got a question about the pot though, it's like, after repotting the pothos, it's not growing, should you repot again? No, don't repot your pothos uh, after you've repotted it. Just, and then because you're not seeing any growth or any activity going on, you know, at the end of the day, like inspect your, your plants. Sometimes it takes time for them to get settled into the new uh, pot and the new size before they can start showing some new growth. Uh, I think at the end of the day, just, you know, take care of it like you normally would, um, you know, prior to it uh, being repotted. IG from Germany. Hello. <laughs> what time is it in Germany right now? I guess it's two here. Like seven in the evening. Eight in the evening. So the most difficult thing about repotting any like root bound type of plant is really just trying to loosen the soil without damaging the roots. Uh, you're most likely gonna, you know, damage a bit of the roots and that's fine. It, it's it's gonna be okay as long as you're not, you know, um, damaging like the entire root system or the root ball, um, it should be fine. And sometimes you don't necessarily even need to like loosen it completely, you know, as long as it's a bit um, not as tight, uh, eventually those roots are gonna grow within the rest of the soil and the, and the new size of the pot. 8.06 p.m. Germany time. Okay. So we are not gonna be able to loosen as much of the roots as I'd like to, but that's okay. Okay, next question. Can you put a, um, a philodendron gloriosum on a moss pole? Um, so philodendron gloriosum, from my experience and based on what I've read, is they tend to grow and crawl closer to the ground. They don't actually climb up uh, or grow tall like a melanochrysum or a verrucosum. So, I don't necessarily think you need to put them on a moss pole. Um, again, they tend to um, just grow downwards and more of a crawler than uh, a climber, if that makes sense. Okay. So I've already put a third layer of my potting mix I'm gonna use. The potting mix I use usually for like my pothos or any of my like very you know common houseplants are organic potting mix or regular potting mix and um, perlite. And my ratio is usually like 60-40. 50-50, uh, it really depends on the plant, the size it's in. And right now, right now I have my ratio to be like 60-40, 60% um, organic potting mix, and then about 40% perlite. <laughs> wow, I am, uh, I'm, not, I'm not very sharp right now. Okay, so again, we put a layer in. Originally, I wanted to um, put this on a moss pole Partly because I find like pothos that climb, like this one, the leaves tend to grow bigger and just faster. Uh, and naturally in the wild, they grow, like they climb on neighboring trees, right? So I kind of wanted to mirror that. And uh, this is one of my favorite plants is the golden pothos, but I really do like, like the, the neon climbing and, or, or the neon trailing. Um, especially like when it's on top of a bookshelf and whatnot. So, well, uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so, I centered the guy and now I'm just gonna try and um, pour some of our potting mix in here. Norway, okay, next question while we do this. What is the fastest pothos in my collection? Ooh, or from my experience? Man, I would, 
I mean, you look at my Neon and you look at the Golden Pothos, I would say those two grew super fast. And I did a video on uh, when I first repotted these guys last year, as well as when I put the Golden Pothos on a Moss Bowl last year. And you guys can do a comparison video uh, for, um, on um, what it looked like back then, just a the one-year growth. I'll maybe do like a one-year growth update on these guys again, but um, they grew pretty fast. But pothos naturally grow fast. I don't know about you guys, like, aren't your pothos growing? Have you worked with Leca or Hydroponics? Um, no, I've never, I've never worked with any of Leca or any Hydroponics. And partly because I just, I don't know, like I don't, I get there's pros and cons uh, to anything, but I'm so, I'm old school. I'm comfortable with uh, soil and, uh, and, and just recently I've been, I've been experimenting with like um, Spagna Moss as a potting medium and obviously Perlite now. Where's the Montserrat plant? Uh, that, which one? The, my original Montserrat plant from Walmart? That one's at my friend's place when I gave the, the cutting. I was able to, I missed that chat. How long should pothos propagate roots before putting in soil? So normally I recommend making sure your roots uh, and your cuttings are at least like an inch to two inch enough for it to obviously um, kind of just, you know, um, blend in with the soil and then from there grow. Um, so it really depends on how long those roots are, depending on, you know, the light you give, um, the location you're, you have it in, the temperature it gets, uh, the roots can grow fast or it can grow slow. So it's all about the size of the roots before repotting. Uh, if you repot too early on a soil um, and it doesn't have a good root system, it can easily die. So I always recommend just to be safe, have those roots to be at least two inches long. And then in addition, make sure that your size of pot you're using isn't too big. I think the common mistake most people make when it comes to repotting is getting too big of a pot for the size of the root because sometimes you look at it just from, oh, it's got a lot of leaves, it looks huge, so you know what, I'm gonna pot it in a big big uh, pot. But then when you look at the root system, it's very small, and at that point, um, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're putting the roots in, a, in its home, not the leaves, if that makes sense. <laughs> and pothos I got from you is thriving. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, the one that I, um, I did take a cutting of this, and I think I did sell it in my, sh in my um, shop. Yeah, every time I take a cutting of this Neon Pothos, it just, it takes off. Most of my plants take off, even the Golden Pothos. I've never had an issue with any Pothos. Uh, no, I don't think I have. <laughs> I know some people do, but... I'm doing well, how are you? Okay, next question. Have you ever felt overwhelmed with time, with the amount of time and money you spend on plants? Um, okay, so that's kind of like a two part question. I would say yes with the, yes. I think the more plants you have, the more time it takes to care for them. And um, you know, especially if your intention is to make sure that they're always thriving and that they're, they're looking their best, that they're healthy, it's gonna be overwhelming, <laughs> you know? Sometimes I find myself um, forgetting about a few plants, which, you know, when you, get a, when you get quite a bit, sometimes you'll tend to forget them, and next time you'll see them, uh, and you're like, wow, I forgot to re water you, um, you know, last week or two weeks ago and whatnot. Um, so it can get overwhelming, but I think for me, what I, I try not to, I guess I try not to get, like, frustrated if that makes sense. I know some people do. For me, I just try to enjoy, I guess, the process. Like I don't, if you get lost in plant work, which I enjoy a lot, like I, and I think that's one of the reasons why I don't make as much videos. Um, if you guys notice, I don't make as much videos as I used to because I'm caring for my own plants as well as plants for the shop. And honestly, I'm, I'm enjoying that more. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love making videos and entertaining you guys, but I can get lost in plant work. Um, like, I don't know, it's just, I, I just can get lost in it, yeah. So, it, yes, it can get overwhelming, but I try to enjoy the process a lot more, uh, if that makes sense. Okay. So, we potted up our neon pothos, and now that it's in a bigger pot, this thing won't dry up as fast, and on top of that, we have more room to add more cuttings at the top, and I'm actually going to, um, there's one vine here 
that kind of lost a bit of the leaves in the middle because I underwatered it by, you know, uh, there was a period where I, I underwatered and the leaves dropped. So I'm actually going to take that vine and cut it off and then make propagation and then that way we can plant it back at the top here and uh, we can make this top part really full. Uh, but we'll do that, uh, maybe we'll do that IG. For now, I'm going to set this guy aside and then we're going to uh, get to the banjulas. I have over 100 plants and they're easy to take care of. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it's good therapy for the mind. I agree. I, I genuinely agree with that. Okay. Just gonna move this guy to the side. Oh, wait. You guys can see. Ta da! Look at it. So now, so lush. Wish mine would look like that. It can look like that. Honestly, like that. Neon Pothos, when I first got it, it was a tiny little four inch pot. It had like two or three vines and you know, with just the right lighting, um, try and not underwater, but also try and not overwater. It can, it can really thrive and take off. Thank you. Oh, are you talking about the plant or me? The plant, right? Okay, just wanna make sure we're done with just kidding. <laughs> you, you say there's like slush and uh, looking. Okay, now, Where's my thing? Oh. We are going to move um, our manjulas that's in 100% perlite. And we're just gonna move them into a soil mix that is 50% cacti soil and 50% perlite. That's what I thought too. <laughs> and I was, was like, oh, it was the neon pathos. Hello, hi Carmen. Carmen's in the chat group. How's, uh, how's Arizona going? Is it really caught right now? Oh wow, look at the, um, the roots in this guy. Oh, so, so happy to see it take off. Hey Mar Loka, thank you for that. It's great to see you, miss you much. I'm having trouble with my snake plant. I see that they, hold on. Let's go answer her snake plant question. I missed it. That they are dying. I have a chance, I have to change soil and they do have, and they don't have any roots or they do have any roots? So when it comes to saving a snake plant, I guess the first thing is obviously understand what's causing them to not be well. Um, and I think this goes for any plant. I often get the question, you know, my plant is dying, you know, it's, it's looking like this, is really take a step back and almost like track what you did before it became, it started to look like that. Like you need to kind of go back in time and say, okay, did I change anything about the way I would care for this plant? Did anything change in my home? Did I repot it? Did I overwater it? Did I, you know, move it, you know, closer to the light or further back? Like you need to kind of just figure out like what happened leading up to why your plant is not doing well. Um, I, I think oftentimes people get like stuck with like, oh, my plant's dying. Let me do this. So back to your snake plant. If it's relating to, I mean, the only way you can really kill a snake plant, to be honest, is like overwatering. Um, and you can kill it by underwatering, but it takes a long time for you to not water that snake plant before uh, it really dies. So just be mindful of the way you're watering it. And if you need to, if you feel like you've overwatered a plant or especially a snake plant and the soil is really heavy and you've tried aerating the soil and, you know, loosening it up, I would say just repot it to like a drier cacti soil and, um, you know, just, just leave it in an area that gets a lot of bright light. Um, oftentimes, when you've repot the plant or when you've overwatered the plant severely and like really the only way to save it is just to repot it to a drier soil if that makes sense okay so we got one of these guys i'm so happy to see the roots doing really well hello greetings from hamilton hello neighbor love watching your videos avid sub here Thank you. Uh, I mean, just, ugh. That was from Beauty of Green. Happy planting, happy planting. So we're gonna take, uh, remove the rest of these guys out of the perlite. Okay, this one has a smaller root system than I expected, but that's okay. Alrighty. Do you have any tips? Peace lilies. Um, I don't. 
it's actually one of the, the plants that I... Every time I see one, I'm like, you know, I, I think I want to get a peace lily, but I, I don't have one. I, I don't have one for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, not to say that, um, yeah, I just don't have one. Um, so I do have a little, I do have an online shop for those of you guys who, you know, maybe new to my account. I um, decided to open up my own little shop, uh, eventually uh, a retail shop here in the city. I live in Toronto. And, um, and yeah, so these, these ones I do sell right now online locally. Yes, you did make it. Okay. So because these guys were in perlite, I don't, and they're, they don't need to be repotted to a bigger size. So I'm just going to leave them in the same uh, three and a half inch container. It's just changing the, the potting mix at this point. Are pothos okay in terracotta pots? Now, uh, yes, they are okay to be used in terracotta pots. The, the only thing I would, I would advise if you are using in terracotta pots is make the soil mix a bit more heavier. Uh, and that's because terracotta pots obviously has a lot of um, pores and airflow really like goes through that pretty quickly. So oftentimes you'll find that the soil dries up a lot faster than if they were in a plastic container. So again, just be mindful of you know, your environment and the potting is you're gonna use. Can I buy plants from your shop? If you're local, yes. <laughs> okay. So I got my little potting mix here. How is the shop going? Any extra stress? Um, you know what, that's actually interesting because I do have a question of that. So one of the question is, what are some of the mistakes you're making, you know, starting your plant shop? Um, so mistakes are going to happen. And I look at mistakes as experience, learning opportunity. And I think the one I made was when I was sourcing out plants and um, importing it. First of all, there's a lot of like due diligence and crap you have to go through. You got to weed out the bad players and you got to have a little bit of trust and faith and all of that stuff. Uh, but the mistake I did was I brought plants that I had no experience in or very little knowledge of, like a very, very new plant. It was the Anodendrum cardatum. What's this one? Uh, I can't get it. Let's see if I can get it. Very beautiful plant, very unique. And it was sold to me as a Syndapsis lucid. And most of the sellers thought this was a Syndapsis lucid. So because it's synapses, I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm comfortable with synapses, I can care for it, it's fine. But it wasn't a synapses lucid. It was, it's an aeroid, but it was so difficult to acclimate. And I, the mistake I made was I bought, I think like 60 pieces. And the reason why I bought a lot of pieces was to help reduce the cost per unit because you want to buy wholesale. So that way I don't have to charge a lot of money to my customers. You know, I want to be able to reduce the cost as, as low as possible on the front end. So that way, because my mission with my shop is I want to, I want to make my plants more accessible and reasonable and affordable for people. So that way everyone can have a plant. <laughs> um, so I made the mistake of buying like 60 pieces, not knowing the plant and how they would acclimate in this environment because there's very little information. So literally 90% of them died. I tried my best to acclimate them, uh, but whenever I would, you know, slowly, you know, take them from 100% humidity to like say 90%, they would just like wither so quickly. Uh, eventually I was able to salvage quite, a, you know, about like, you know, 10%. Um, and 90 days or more before it finally started to hold on its own without this looking like now I can have this in the greenhouse, which has about like 60% humidity and it's fine. And it looks nice. It's beautiful. But that would be kind of uh, one mistake I made is um, not, not being aware of the plants. And, and but I think that goes with anything, with, especially just, you know, when I was a new plant parent, I bought a whole bunch of plants that I knew little about. And uh, I kind of just had to go through that experience. Um, any added stress? Yeah, you know, I want to... I wanna, I just want to get my space so that way I can do a lot more plant work. Uh, my condo can only fit so much, so, but we're close. We're close to securing a, sp a space. Um, okay. 
So, I'm gonna get my other potting mix. Um, give me one second. Because I do have another mix sp specifically for manjulas. Hold on, I think it's outside. Yeah, it was outside. And uh, the difference between this and this potting mix over the one I used for the neon pothos is this is using more cacti soil than um, regular potting mix, organic potting mix, only because I'm so afraid to overwater these manjulas. <laughs> and my ratio of perlite's like 50-50. Alrighty. Over in, central, over in Central California. Who is that? When? The last time I was in Central California was whew, when I used to travel for my um, my corporate job back then. <laughs> what brand is your potting mix? I just use, I know everyone craps on them, Miracle Grow. And tip for those of you guys who have issues with Miracle Grow having fungus gnats is first of all, your potting soil, you want it to always be dry. Like if you have it in a bag that's moist, there's gonna be uh, fungus gnats eventually. So what I like to do is actually leave mine outside in a sunny day to dry it out. Uh, so that way it's not always wet or moist. If it is moist and I need to use it, uh, what I do is I actually just put it in like a little, um, you know, container like this and I throw it in the microwave and like heat it up for a couple minutes. So that way it kills any like bugs or organism that's in there and it works. So, uh, but I, I use miracle grow for me is fine. No complaints for me. UK, love your content. Thank you. This one's gonna be beautiful. You got all those roots. Watching you from the Philippines. Magandang umaga. What do you think of soilless potting mediums? Um, like I said, I've used like um, spangle moss for a lot of my ethereums, philodendrons, and I like that. I like that potting medium. Um, that doesn't mean it can't get like fungus gnats as well because they can, um, you know, but um, like I said, Leica for me, I'm just not experienced with it. I have no desire or interest to switch over to it. Um, I'm very old school, so I like soil. I'm comfortable with it, um, but yeah. I found your channel. I'm trying to save ferns that hate me. Ferns are tricky, you know, they, um, I don't do well with ferns either. Maybe that's why I don't have any ferns, except for one. I think I have one of those um, blue oil ferns. Okay, next question. Most rewarding part of your plant journey so far? The most rewarding part of my plant journey so far? I would say, wow, there's a lot. I mean, like, like I think all of us can agree we find a lot of peace and joy and comfort in our plant journey, notwithstanding there's a bit of frustration, you know, sadness sometimes, but I think for the most part, we're all pretty um, comfortable uh, and, and, you know, happy with the journey. In terms of rewarding experience, I would say, aside from obviously all the things I mentioned, is this, like hanging out with you guys and making videos and connecting with so many people around the world, uh, either through Instagram or YouTube and and just finding that common interest, um, I think it's been pretty rewarding, pretty pretty cool experience because I used to think I was like so weird um, for liking too many plants and then I realized, wait, there's more of us out there. So um, I would say that's a, that's pretty um, a rewarding experience for me is just knowing that um, there's a lot of us out there. Okay, next question. Netherlands. Can we grow ruby plants completely indoors? Um, rubber plants, yeah, I, I, all my rubber plants are indoors. Um, I've never taken those plants outside. The only plants I ever bring outside during the summer months are my succulents, now that uh, they're all season loving plants, uh, jade plants. Um, other than that, I don't bring my rubber plants outside. Uh, they do well indoors. Yes, the plant community is awesome. I mean, of course it is, but like every community, it's not perfect. It has its uh, troubles and issues sometimes. <laughs> Just kidding. 
or you're looking to open your shop in Toronto, will you ship? Oh, yeah. So the place I'm looking at right now, I was actually just responding back to my realtor trying to close this deal. I found a space, um, just trying to close it and lock it down. It's um, in downtown Toronto. It's gonna be on the east side. Uh, it'll be on Broadview. If you guys are in Toronto, you, you should be familiar with where Broadview is. And um, once I have a shop, I'm gonna have more space to obviously be able to uh, ship uh, Canada wide because I just couldn't, I don't have the space right now to have, have all these packaging materials in my place in addition to all the plants. So that's why I'm not doing any Canada wide shipping right now. But once I have the space, well, we'll definitely do that. Love the community. Are you Filipino? Yes. I, I always get that question. Do I not look Filipino? Can buy late by hello. Hello, Texas. Wow, we got a lot of people hanging out right now. <laughs> He's not even looking at my message. Too late. You guys are too fast. Hello, come on by in. Okay, next question. Thanks, Krista. Oh, hey, Krista. Plant not. Okay. New technique for making moss pole. So if you guys have seen like uh, my video on how, how I made the moss pole for this golden pothos, um, I used um, a piece of wood, um, some kind of chicken wire, and then moss. I would say if I was to do that differently, I would I wouldn't probably use the thick wood that I use in the middle. Partly because the taller it is, the more weight, and then you're gonna need something in the base to hold it down. I would have probably used like a thin bamboo uh, in the center for just additional support, and then I would make the moss as thick as possible because you want the moss to be thicker to A, retain a bit more of the moisture, but also have the roots kind of grow in there. Um, that's probably what I would do differently if I was to make a moss pole again. Thank you, Mayor. Hello, Marilyn. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Okay, so here's another mandula. Oh, did I show you guys? Wait, I don't think I showed you. Oh, uh, where is that plant? Oh, it's over there, hold on. Um, let me see if I find it. Uh, oh yeah, it's right here, okay. So some people were like, how can you tell like a pothos or a mandula apart? And I put these two plants like close together and literally they look very, very similar in terms of the variegation. This is a Marble Queen uh, from one of my uh, other Marble Queen, and this is a Mandula. But you guys can see how closely they look. Uh, obviously the shape of the leaf on this one's a little different than this one, uh, but yeah. Next question. Hmm. If you can visit any botanical garden in the world, where would it be? Wow, this was tough because I had intentions before COVID of like traveling the world and traveling all these places for botanical gardens. Uh, I've only been to a few. Uh, I've been to the one in uh, Mexico, PV, uh, New York Botanical Garden, uh, the Toronto one, obviously. But I don't know if this counts as a botanical garden, but there's this outdoor garden or park. I think it's in Atlanta. And I saw it in a movie with Sine Lathan. Was it Sine Lathan? It was on a Netflix movie. Uh, it was based in Atlanta, but the garden had those like sculptures and statues. And if you guys see Moana, you know that the, um, whatever, the big lady with like, <laughs> the garden lady. Uh, but there's a statue that looks like her, but like she's covered in flowers, she's sleeping. It just looks, it looks so beautiful. I mean, I would love to go there and just like hang out at the park. I think that's what I would do. Okay. Um, I'm struggling with my Sigonia. Okay. Next question. Annoying questions you get in your DMs. <laughs> um, I, I, unfortunately, I can't stay on top of my DMs, so I don't, I don't hardly check it. Um, when I do check it, sometimes the questions that kind of get to me are. But I have to be mindful that not everyone is on the same page when it comes to plant care or plant 
experience or knowledge. So I often get a lot of the same questions over and over and over again, and I've answered them, you know, quite a few times. If not one on one, I've answered them on one of my posts or in one of my videos. But in any event, I think the one I always get is like, say, in my stories, I'm talking about a particular plant, like say the Manjula pothos. Hey guys, look at this Manjula pothos, and I take a picture of it. And then I get a DM asking, what plant is that? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> it's a Manjula pothos. So those ones make me laugh more than anything. Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> Tell us all about your love life. Ooh, juicy. You guys are nosy that way. Um, should you make Word doc for, for his FAQ? I thought about making a Word document, you know. Um, okay. <laughs> what do you want to know about my love life? Um, I obviously got this question. So, <laughs> I am single. Um, and I was thinking about this the other day on, because I, 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 you know, I appreciate the gesture and the kind words and I often get the question, you know, why are you single and all that? Uh, it's my choice and, and I, I was thinking about why I choose to be single. Um, partly because obviously it's, you know, relationship takes a lot of time, uh, especially if you want it to be meaningful and you want it to make it work. Um, and um, I was thinking about this the other day as I have a, a very small, like, close group of friends. I wouldn't even say close. I, I, I got a few, like, friends, especially not being from Toronto. Uh, but, you know, a couple of them know about the shop I'm opening, and some of them are really wanting to get involved. You know, like, let me, you know, I can help you out, blah, 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 this and this. And although I appreciate the gesture, I, I, I want to do this for me. I'm doing this for me. And I thought about it from that point on, like, I think part of the reason why I choose to not want anyone else in my life is, this is going to sound weird, maybe some of you guys can relate, maybe not, but I don't want to share my life right now with anyone, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's me being greedy, or I just, because it's always been a dream and passion of mine, like, I just want to do it for me. I don't want to have to share it with anyone right now. I don't want to have to, I, I just don't want to, I just want to do this for me. You know, I, I, I've grown up always watching up for others, and doing things for others and for the first time I want to do something for me and I don't want to share it with anyone right now but me and obviously you guys through my experience and my journey um, I don't know if that I don't know if that's if that makes sense if that's just me being greedy or that's just weird or what but I just want to do it for me and I don't want I don't want to share it with anyone right now you know um, so I'm trying to be really nice to some of the friends or people who want to like be part of, of this. I'm like, no, you know, I, the reason why I quit my job is so I can do something for me. Uh, I don't want to share with anyone. I don't, <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I think that's kind of my answer to why I choose to be single for now, if that makes sense. Thank you, you know, I, and I, I agree. I think you don't want to succumb to, um, for these, and, and you know, part of it too is I don't know, maybe it's because I'm, I, I'm getting older a bit where it's like, I've never felt ever in my life where I just feel so comfortable with, with me and, and everything. So the happier you are, the happier you can make other people make sense. Thank you. Yeah, I love Carmen Spitzy. She, hers, hers, <laughs> she's so calm. I, I keep telling her to start like a, pod, a podcast. How to get rid of skills. Okay, so... I've repotted our Mandula pothos. Uh, normally, after repotting, um, you're gonna want to give them a bit of a drink, uh, allow the water to drain through, and then you know place them in an area where they were once to uh, care for them. But in terms of plant work, that is all I had plants right now. So we can hang out for a bit. I can now answer a few of your questions live, and uh, we can go from there. I'm actually doing my podcast, uh, doing some research on it. Yay! Because like you have the perfect voice um for those of you guys who remember i used to do like these um um like plant talk shows where i would interview which by the way i don't know if i should do that again which i've interviewed quite a few of our plant friends from the community and carmen being one of them one of my favorite interviews because i felt like it was just it was so smooth and it was so natural and part of it too is because carmen's she she's a pro she's a natural 
Stay single as long as you can, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> yes, do it again. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll, you know, now that we're in the summer, maybe it could be like a season thing. We can get, do season two and invite a few more of our planty friends from the community. From here, could ever talk about it? But it's Alba big here in Switzerland. Uh, Alba's huge here. <laughs> well, any Alba plant. I love your plant talk show. Oh, thanks, Krista. Alrighty. I am new to the channel and I love it. Have you been a tour? I haven't done an updated plant tour yet, partly because the last one I did was upstairs in my bedroom. And this area right now, you guys can't really see, it's a bit of a mess. So again, once I have the shop ready, I can like move a few stuff over there and then uh, I can do more of a home tour plus a shop tour from India. Um, my Hoya Bella has 30, wow, I, that's amazing. The fact that your Hoya is blooming, I, my Hoyas do not bloom. It's, I've only had the Matilde bloom other than that, and the Angleriana. Other than that, the rest aren't bleeding, but there's a lot of growth and a lot of leaves going on right now. Random question, can you play the sax in the background? I could play the sax in the phone. Uh, I'm just not very good at it. I used to play back in high school, uh, and part of the reason why I took it, you know, uh, just in the beginning of COVID was, you know, to kind of just get back into some of my uh, childhood. You know, when you, when you do things back then and you weren't like appreciative of it, uh, I think I hated playing the sax in, in high school. I was like, I don't want to do this. You know, my grandpa forced me. And then now that you're older, you're like, man, I wish I stuck with it. So that's kind of why I got one. I have one I used to practice. Yes, I used to play. Um, okay. Carmen has shared some political views that I agree with her on Instagram stories. Um, Look, at the end of the day, when, you're, when you put yourself in public, and, and I know not everyone's going to like me or whoever out there, and that's okay. We're going to have different views and different opinions, and that's okay. I think it's, it's tough as a creator because it really depends on the individual. But for me, I never really expected um, when I started my channel, my Instagram, to have this many people you know relate to or i can relate to and at the end of the day when you are i guess a public figure i hate to use that word but you personally for me i feel like there's a responsibility for you to be real and be authentic outside of the plant world i mean we, we don't live in a bubble you know what i mean like i am impacted with whatever's going on out there in the world and things that resonate with me, I will speak up about it. Um, and not everyone's gonna agree with it. And that's okay. Uh, I think at the end of the day, as long as we're all respectful of it, uh, it should be fine. But uh, that's just my views on that. Okay, what else you guys got for me? You like your Pringles. Wait, you see my Pringles? Oh no, I'm exposed. <laughs> I'm gonna hide this. <laughs> Do I like my dragon scale flower? Um, what are you talking about the alocasia? So whenever I find that whenever an alocasia blooms, right now I don't pollinate any alocasia blooms. So for me, I just cut them. I don't let. Sometimes they just take too much energy. So for me, I cut them. Uh, it's really preference at this point. Right, just Benjaminas, man, they're notorious for dropping leaves everywhere. I've never heard of that potting medium. Alrighty, so we are going in 45 minutes. Okay, a um, few final questions before I sign off here. Oh, and for those of you guys who didn't give this video a thumbs up yet, what, what are you doing? Why, why are you, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please thumbs it up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and for those of you guys watching this in the future, um, you can turn on your live chat to follow along. Does your tie as fast as your monstera? It's growing super fast right now, um, I'm, which I'm so happy. My tie constitution monstera, like it, I was so afraid that when I first cut the top off it, that it wasn't gonna grow, but it just took off, which is great. Hello in the future. Hey, Jacqueline's jungle. Um, alrighty. Okay, final questions before I sign off. 
How long have you been a crazy plant guy? All my life. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, like serious, like I would say probably since 2017, end of 2016. Like I had a few plants, um, like one or two uh, leading up to when I decided to really go crazy. Uh, and growing up, I had a lot of plants around me. Uh, my oldest plant is probably like 17 years old. It's a jasmine plant and I've had it since, yeah, since I first moved out of my mom's place, I think. Ew, my Fy Ficus triangularis man, they, they're, they're probably the only ficus plant right now that I struggle with. I have mine in the greenhouse. I've never, every time I take it out of the greenhouse, it like drops leaves and so I always panic, so I just leave it in the greenhouse. Um, I do sell plants, but local only. <laughs> it was born this way, baby. Exactly. Just kidding. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thank you all so much uh, for hanging out with me. And uh, like I said, um, you know, you can always comment below in the questions, in the questions, in the comments. And, you know, if you I missed some of your questions and hopefully I can get to them. Um, enjoy the rest of your sun, yay. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. If not, I'll see you guys on my IG. All right. Okay, Nemo's ne sh Nemo, hold on, I'm coming. She wants her hugs. I will see you later. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye, Carmen. <laughs> okay, Nemo, I'm coming. Hold on. Okay, see you guys. <laughs>